Hello everyone and welcome back to I the Somnium Files. In the last session, things started to get weird. Iris was killed, and then we went into So's Somnium, saved her in the Somnium, and that saved her in real life. Now, the question is, is that actually a correlation? D is there some very of a super sci-fi thing going on here where saving her in the Somnium does change the actual events that happened, or the other explanation is that she was never dead to begin with, and Date's mind is playing tricks on him due to spending too long in the Somnium right at the start of this uh, this timeline, this branch, uh, and so he's just getting completely messed up because the thing that leans me more towards that direction is that Iba was not there. Uh, Iba very conveniently ran out of power right before we went in and found the body, and then powered back up after we left, so Iba cannot corroborate what we found. So, yes, that's about where we are, and uh, I'm very interested to see where this goes. Sup, boss. Uh, a dream-changing reality? Date and Iba saved Iris and Somnium, and that changed the history of the real world? Hmm. I'm, I'm pretty confident it won't be that, but I would love it to be. Well, I... I guess it's not impossible. I, I, it is pretty impossible. <laughs> that isn't what you said yesterday. That was then, this is now. A woman's mind changes with the phases of the moon, you know. No, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, I believe in Date. I trust him more than anyone else in Abyss. Aw, nice of you to say. About so. Congressman Sejima is suspicious in more ways than one. Exhibit A. Three days ago, So called Shoko Nadami's phone. We still don't know exactly why. He only told us it was meant to be private. Exhibit B. So Sejima was at Okiura Fishery Warehouse last night, but he didn't inform us of this. There must be something he doesn't want us knowing. Exhibit C. So was an Iris's Somnium. Ha! Huh. That's a fuck up on the voice acting. So was in Iris's Somnium. She said. Unless my brain just fucking hard farted. Iris was in So's Somnium, not So was in Iris's Somnium. Dreams are constructed from memories. Yet the good congressman denies he ever knew Iris. Okay, uh, about prophetic dream. That's the other thing, is that we had a dream that showed Iris dying in the exact way we found her. So, it's not a prophetic dream, it's like our mind like taking our own dreams and projecting them onto the real world because our minds like messed up because of spending too long in the original Somnium I think I think that's what it was we had a bad dream for whatever reason and then we projected that into reality like hallucinated it or whatever stranger things have been known to happen so rather than it being a prophecy it was the reason that we saw it two days ago Date found Iris's frozen corpse in Mizuki Somnium it must have been a prophecy. Boss. There's a lot of stuff in this world that can't be explained by science. Although, actually, yeah, I forgot it was. we saw it in Mizuki Somnium. It wasn't something that we just dreamed of, naturally. Hmm. So why, yeah, hmm. Because that means Iba did see that. So that was actually in Mizuki Somnium. Hmm. Boss's knack for change is one of her good qualities. Not having beliefs is what she believes in. That's how she established herself as a major player in the police department, because she believed what she wanted to. Where's So now? I sent him home yesterday. You released him? What was I supposed to do? Not release him? <laughs> we can't hold him without solid proof. Ah, uh, why not? What Let's just do it. Iris Let's just have some yet. good banter and just keep him in there. In any case, we have to speak with him again. Boss is sitting on the desk. I'm in Iva's line of sight. Okay, dream-changing reality. It is absurd. Not possible. Dreams are figments of the imagination. An incident which took place entirely in your mind cannot have any bearing on the real world. That is preposterous. Consider it. If you were to find money in your dream, does your bank account balance go up in reality? If you were to be attacked by aliens in your dream, does a swarm of UFOs invade Earth? But at the warehouse, I... You must have been hallucinating. 
Within Mizuki Somnium, you saw Iris's frozen corpse. It is affecting your mental state. Last night, you were so phased by it that you couldn't speak. If it bothers you to this degree, why not go talk to Iris? Uh, about Okiura Fishery. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created... Oops. Another connection to Renju. His father created the company. Didn't mean to skip that. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. You know what? That's a fact that has been repeated to us multiple times. And there must be a reason for it, right? Like, the, they, they have, they've really hammered that fact home. Which means that it's important in some way. Hmm. Because otherwise, like, what's the point of it having any relation to his family at all? If it's just like, oh yeah, it used to be, but now it's not. Like, why even add that plot element in there and then repeat it to you multiple times to make sure you know it? If that doesn't matter. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. There has to be something but it can't more to that. Be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Uh, more about the fishery? I would suggest searching the warehouse again. You may be able to discover why Iris was resurrected. About Renju? Mizuki went to Bloom Park three nights ago. She was prompted by a Nile message from Renju. Mizuki, Daddy got caught up in something serious. Please come to Bloom Park's merry-go-round right away. There are three possibilities. One, Renju killed Shoko, or was an accessory to the murder. Two, Renju was threatened or blackmailed into luring Mizuki to the scene. Three, the culprit used Renju's phone to send the Nile message. That does seem the most likely. I can't imagine him inviting his daughter to see his mum's, her mum's dead body. Like... In any case, the motive is still unknown. We don't know much about Renju, but he doesn't... He doesn't seem like that bad a dude. Like, he wasn't there for his daughter when she was getting fucking like, ruined by Shoko, so that's obviously terrible, but he did orchestrate her getting out of that situation and coming to us, so, like, he does care. He was just really tied up in his business and wasn't really, like, he was paying way too little attention to his family. Like, it was, he was being neglectful, but I don't think he's, like, a terrible person from what we've seen so far. I think he was just, like, you know, like, the regular brand of, like, shitty parent. We need to talk to Renju. As opposed to Shoko, who is like actual evil. Like, straight up battering her child kind of evil. Renju, where did you go? So I don't think he would have actually, like, told his daughter to come see. Uh, where is Renju? You asked Mama at Marble for information regarding Renju Okiura, correct? It is possible she may have something for you by now. I asked Momo for information too, but I had to promise him a meeting with Iris. Momo can wait for now. We can talk to Iris's mom as well. She was Renju's classmate, right? Iba told me about her. Okay, where is Iris now? Her cell phone is on. I can trace her via GPS. She is currently somewhere in the Lemniscate building. Summary! There are four people I should talk to. So Sejima, Iris and Hitomi Sagan, and Mama. And I need to check the warehouse one more time. Oh boy! <laughs> we have many avenues of investigation. Time to go around the world again. Moving. Uh, let's just do it in order. Let's go see so, see so, see so, 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 so. So, a dear female dear. Boom, ba ba na 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 mo. So, Sejima is a key person of interest in this case. Earlier, the boss cited three points of suspicion against him, and I agree with her assessment. I checked the call logs of So's phones. Congressman Sejima has one phone under his name, 
and a burner phone rented under a fake name. Did you find anything interesting? Unfortunately, no. Really? But I do have something. I looked into So's secretary's phone. One call in particular stood out to me. Huh? It was one week ago, from Fuchu Prison. The ah. caller identified themselves as inmate number 89. Interesting. Number 89. Now, this version of Darte doesn't know shit about 89, right? Yes. This is most likely the same person who called HQ. Oh no, that has happened in this version. Okay. It's hard keeping track of what happened in which timeline, you know? Uh, who is 89? From what I can determine, he is an assassin. He accepts jobs from the criminal underworld for substantial rewards. His code name is Falco. Falco? Correct. Okay, uh, what's 89's real name? Unknown. You don't know? He is not registered in any databases. He could be a foreigner or recent immigrant, but it would be impossible to determine from where. However, I did not detect any accent in his speech. I believe we can conclude that he grew up in Japan. What's he in jail for? Murder. He is serving a life sentence for multiple counts. He was imprisoned six years ago. Six years ago? What a curious time. Exactly the same time that I lost my eye. What's the relationship between So and 89? Unknown. You would have to ask Mr. Sejima for that information. Number 89 said he knew who killed Shoko. He did, but that may be a lie. Does he have any connections to the Cyclops serial killings? Unknown. In all honesty, I have no idea. He was the Cyclops killer, or at least one half of it. <laughs> Should we visit Fuchu Prison? No, we don't have time. Call up boss. Tell her to request that number 89 be brought to Abyss. Roger. I wonder if we'll have the same interrogation scene or if it'll be different. Okay, So's house. Time to I make heard friends. There was no body found at the cold storage warehouse. Isn't your investigation over? I heard that if I just stumble into you, you'll fall in your fucking pond, mate. Why did you call Shoko? You are beginning to irritate me. What did you want to talk to her about? What is the private matter you mentioned? What is your relationship with her? I'll answer your questions when you present a warrant. <sighs> about Iris. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know that girl. I've never seen her before. Date. I knew he was lying. This proves it. I am having difficulty determining his motive for lying. After all, Iris was not killed. Maybe he's got a secret with her he doesn't want us knowing. What are you hiding so? Why were you at the warehouse? I told you I will not answer that question. And why not? We didn't find anything there. There's nothing to hide. It appears that he will not respond. About 89. Number 89? Who is that? An inmate at Fuchu Prison. He used to go by Falco. He was an assassin. Odd, finding such a person in Japan. What about him? About a week ago, he called your secretary. I don't know anything about that. He was probably calling for a pardon or some such nonsense. My secretary probably decided it wasn't worth my attention. Hmm. I don't believe that. Need information you can ask her. I can't help you. Haven't you people got enough? I'm very busy. Excuse me. Oh, actually, I do have one more thing to tell you. To be honest, Kaname Date, I don't like you. Oh, well. The feeling's mutual, mate. I don't ever want to see you again. So I suggest that you don't show your face here anymore. It's what's best for both of us. Understand? All right, Dad. So walked away Who sternly. does this guy think he is? Date, your blood pressure is skyrocketing. Any higher could kill you. <sighs> Relax, Date. <sighs> we still have much to do. I know, I know. 
Wah, 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 wah. Mama. Oh, mama. Mama Zita. You need more info on Ren? I'm sorry to waste your time, but I don't have anything for you. I see. Well, good chat. Off we go then. <laughs> uh, about Renju. You know about Renju and the Kumakura gang, right? Yeah, I know. I heard it from his own mouth right here. Do they have anything to do with the talent scandal at Lemnisgate? Maybe now they do, since Renju is the president of Lemnisgate. But even before that, Renju and the Kumakuras go way back. All the way back to high school. Hey, Date. Have you ever seen a dead body? I remember Renju saying that to me after he and I went through a bottle. You're a policeman. I don't know what department, but I assume you aren't handing out traffic tickets. So, how about it? I didn't answer. I turned the question around on him. What about you? Me? Well, yeah. Not just one. Countless bodies. When I was in high school, I had a pretty crazy job. You know the Kumakura gang? I was hooked up to one of their phone fraud scams. I just had to go collect the money from drop points and give it to the Kumakuras. It was an easy job. Eventually, I became friends with the higher-ups. They started taking me with them on jobs. What jobs? The target was always an elderly person from the country with no family. Yeesh. Elderly folk who owned a lot of land, you know? They live every day in loneliness and desperation. Alright. You know what I was saying about Renju not being a particularly bad dude? Pretty sure he's justifying murder here? You just have to be nice to them. That's all it takes. Or is it? No, maybe not. Okay, I thought... Okay, I may have jumped to conclusions. It sounded like he was going, Yeah, they're so lonely, so it's better if we just go out there and pop them, you know? You guys would get to know the old people, and they would set up an adoption process. After that, you just have to get them really drunk. Throw them in the tub full of hot water. Wait! Never mind! I, I 180 that opinion again! And they pass. Just like that. Heart attack, brain hemorrhage, or they simply go to sleep and drown. The police almost never investigated. It always looked natural. Like they died of old age. Man, I can't believe I literally was just saying how I don't think you're a bad dude. Motherfucker. So the adopted gang members would inherit the land. Do the police not go, hmm, sure is funny how these fucking unrelated people keep getting adopted and then the people that adopt them keep suddenly dying and it's the same fucking gang members that- Oh my god. And sell it and make massive profits. I watched a lot of people get killed like that. And I've seen journalists get killed for getting too close to the truth. So I... I... <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? Are you going to arrest me? I took a sip from my glass. I didn't say anything for you a while. You didn't do it yourself, right? No, I was always the lookout. But still... Date, I... Tears fell to the counter, unending. We didn't say another word until the ice in the glass had melted to nothing. Yeesh. Huh, summarized for me is usually what ends the conversation, so I guess that was the only one we had to hear. About 89. Oh, Falco? You know him? I know him as a famous assassin in the underworld. Just rumors, though. Nothing specific. What kind of rumors? Mm, he's good. 100% success rate. No evidence. I mean, there must be some fucking evidence if he got caught and jailed. He was a world-class killer. Did you ever meet him? Nope. I don't even know what he looks like. Any other info? I know he's connected to the Kumakuras somehow. Them again. Well, that's about it. Well, How's it going? I could use a little help down there, if you know what I mean. I do not know what she means. Perhaps you should take her up on her offer. Perhaps I shouldn't. Absolutely not. Why are you always brushing that fish? I find it calming. Why is that? Don't ask me. I don't have anything else for you. 
sorry I'm not much help. No, don't worry about it. Can you come back again tonight? Oh, why? There's a regular here who was good friends with Ren. Okay. They should be here tonight. If you ask him, he might have some information for you. Sounds good. Tonight? Yes. I'll be waiting for you. Alrighty, onwards. The oh. Sagan residence, Iris's joint. Let's go see best girl and best mum. I apologize for yesterday. I arrived uninvited. No, I'm grateful. Thanks to you, Mizuki has her voice back. No, I didn't do anything. Uh, it's Monday, isn't it? School day? <laughs> Today's a holiday. I suppose there's never a day off for a detective. Oh, but you aren't a detective, right? Technically, yes. But I still deal with crime. I see. Today is a holiday. You forgot to, didn't you? About Iris. I've put Iris through so much. I was 19 and single when she was born. People didn't take kindly to that. But Iris was such a fighter. She always protected me. I remember, one time at the nursery, some of the other mothers were talking about me. Do we know who her dad is? She was 19 and single when Iris was born. So she got knocked up and then the dad left. Could the dad be Renju? Hmm. Iris ran up to them and said, Don't talk about my mommy. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the mother, but it's Iris who's always protecting me. What about your parents? They died when I was 17. Oh shit. So they died, and then... Like, well... You were 19 when Iris was born, that takes like 9 months, so you may have already been 19, you may have been 18, but it was like around a year, year and a bit later, that you were getting in with some shit, I assume shit people, because they didn't stick around, so. <laughs> I was an orphan, and my relatives lived far away. They might have taken me in, but I was already in my second to last year of high school. It wasn't a good idea for me to move that late. So I decided to stay here, by myself. And take care of Iris. Yes, all alone. But Renju would help sometimes. Uh, where is Renju? Did something happen to him? You asked me that yesterday. Okay, that's a subtitle fail. <laughs> did something happen to him? And then I click forward, and the next line is, did something happen to him? <laughs> There's no point hiding it. I told her about Renju's disappearance. Right from the hospital? I'm sorry. I have no idea. It was always just me and her. Vacations, barbecues, zoos, amusement parks. Just me and her. Well, you did a good job. Oh, that reminds me. When Iris was five, there was a children's theater show in Bloom Park. It was called Milky Moon. <laughs> it was about girls as magical space rangers and such. Ah, yes. Milky Moon. <laughs> she loved singing and dancing. Whenever she heard music, her body would start moving. It was a quirk of hers. And she did it at the show, too. Toward the end, when all the Milky Moon girls were dancing to the ending song, I was climbed Milky up Moon. onto the stage and danced <laughs> with them. Oh, that just sounds so bad. I tried to stop her, of course. I grabbed her arm and tried to get her to sit, but before I knew it, she was up there, dancing. And everyone was so excited. Even I was dancing by the end of it. When it was over, she had the biggest smile on her face. Mama, you're a good dancer. That's the kind of girl she was. Whenever she sees someone playing music on the street, she'll run up and join them, right then and there. Music at the train station, the crosswalk beeping, even at convenience stores. When their little chime played, she would start dancing. It almost got her into trouble once. She was on the jungle gym and a truck drove by. It was playing loud music out the windows. She climbed up to the top and started dancing, but she lost her balance and fell. She fractured her leg pretty badly. It was on a Sunday, and it was hard to find an open emergency care. Ah. Right, yeah, of course, because nobody gets hurt on Sundays, so why would why would emergency care need to be open? What? Is that a thing in Japan? I was carrying her on my back, running and running through town. I could 
I'd still hear her crying. Will I still be able to dance, Mommy? Can I still dance? She cried and cried into my shoulder. It was the only time she ever cried so much. Uh, no, um, that's not true. There was one other time. What was the other time? Was it when Falco fucking shot you in the shoulder? Six years ago, I was the victim of a shooting. Is that the first time we've been confirmed that that was six years ago? Like, we, I knew, like, we assumed that. Because we're dreaming of it on our own. We dreamed of it at the very start of the game without being in any Zomnium. We dreamed of that shooting. And that means we were there. That means we witnessed it. So we were in the room. And the timeline... Can we access the timeline here? Yeah. Do do do. The very top left. That is us in the house shooting. And I presume that's six years ago as well. And then through that door, I think, is where she got shot. And that is that is boss right there with a bunch of people aiming guns at us. And us aiming a gun back, it looks like. I think our arms are... We can't see our gun, but our arms are raised, so... Like, it makes sense that that was six years ago, and that's when shit went down, and no one will talk to us about it and everything, so... Yeah. Curious. Most curious. After the surgery, Iris came in running. And she was sobbing. Oh, Mommy, little... don't die! Don't die! Little baby Iris. Aw. <laughs> Her hair was pink even back then. I swore to myself then that I would protect her no matter what. That's a long time to be dyeing your hair pink and starting pretty young. Iris is everything to me. More important than my own life. Iris must really enjoy dancing. That's what you took from that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> Round of applause for Iber. Yeah. Though her drawing skills could use some work. Drawing skills? Look at the drawing on the wall. The drawing on the wall looks interesting. I've been wondering about that picture. Iris drew it when she was 12. That's you on the left and Iris in the middle, correct? And Falco on the right. Yes. And who's on the right? The man I was dating at the time. It was only for three months, but... I met him about six years ago. What a coinky dink! Have you been to the Kume Shrine in the Minato district? I was praying there one day and I heard a voice. Well, more like a groan. Behind the shrine, I saw a man sitting on the ground. He was bleeding badly from his stomach. I took out my phone to call an ambulance, but he grabbed my wrist and he held me. And then he kissed me. Very normal behavior. You know. Of course, anyone would end up dating someone in that situation instead of, like, fucking moving swiftly backwards going, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? And running, probably. <laughs> I was shocked, but when I stared into his eyes... I saw he was a mass murderer. Then I heard footsteps, and then a bunch of men yelling. They were looking for him. When the voices and footsteps faded, he let me go. Don't call an ambulance. And don't call the cops. I knew he had to be a criminal. So I took him to an underground clinic I knew. You took him to a mob doctor? Renju's friend. I only met him once. Even though we had our first kiss seconds after meeting each other, it took a long time before I got to see him again. The first time we held hands was when we watched a horror movie together. The first time I took his arm was when we went to a haunted house in an amusement park. Motherfucker! How dumb are you, Hitomi? Like, I like you, but how dumb are you? You were aware from your very first meeting that he's a criminal, bad enough to have a whole lot of people out looking for him. And then I get helping him, like, you know, you see someone injured, you take them to get care, like, I get that part, but then going back and then dating this guy, who you know is like a pretty big criminal? 
Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you introduce a criminal into your family life with a kid at home and everything? Like, <laughs> But I wasn't the one who grabbed him. If I'm looking after a child, I don't go looking to insert fucking criminals into my life, you know? <laughs> it just seems like a really fucking weird choice. A zombie jumped out and scared us, and he clung onto my arm. He had that cute side to him. And I was falling in love. Our second kiss was in the car. It's cliche, I know. But we drove around at night, looking at all the lights. We parked our car near a warehouse and kissed. I don't think we ever said I love you. Huh. At that warehouse, huh? You just happened to be at that warehouse? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, I say. We both knew. We were getting closer and closer. Was it not Falco? Like, she's reminiscing very fondly of this guy. So was it not him that shot her? Like, in our dream, it was him that was stood over her. And she was on the floor, like, unconscious. I thought dead at the time, but obviously not. But, like, she's speaking very fondly of him. So did I shoot her six years ago? But then she'd surely recognize me. So, hmm. I introduced him to Iris about a month after I first met him. She is fucking adorable. Oh my god. <laughs> Iris never had a father figure in her life before. She warmed up to him immediately and treated him like a real dad. Even as he was doing lines off the table. From then on, it was always the three of us together. We would go to the beach, to the river, the zoo, the amusement park. Going to barbecues with another person was a new experience for me and Iris. Everything felt so fresh. Every day was so exciting. Oh, sorry. You asked about the picture. You wanted to make Okonomiyaki one day. He was working with the hot plate. It was ridiculous. He was trying to flip one, and it flew up in the air and landed right on my head. Iris saw the whole thing and laughed and laughed. I hadn't seen her laugh like that in a long time. I was having so much fun that I put an Okonomiyaki on their heads, too. Plop, plop. I added the bonito flakes and mayo and sauce. You poured mayo onto their heads? What's wrong with you? At this point, there was no going back. <laughs> Eggs flew, flour going everywhere. The room was not a pretty sight. After our battle, we laughed like crazy. Be cleaning that shit up for weeks. We were rolling around on the floor. You were rolling mayo and flour into your floor. So Iris decided to draw it. I, I, I cannot deal. I cannot deal. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how shit that would be to clean up? I guess it's a wooden floor here, huh? So maybe it wouldn't be as bad. I was thinking carpet, but like, that's still not good. <laughs> it's nostalgic. But those days didn't last. Six years ago, in November, a man with a gun broke into our house. So it wasn't him. So it was me? Fortunately, Iris wasn't home at the time. It, it really seems like it was me. But... She would recognize me. But my boyfriend was. That's why the gunman came. He wanted to kill him. Yeah, no shit. Your boyfriend's a criminal, which you knew and shouldn't have got involved with. <laughs> with a fucking with a fucking kid. Like, lucky that Iris wasn't home, but she, like, it's just chance, right? He wanted to kill him and he would never stop. He pulled the trigger. I tried to protect him. The bullet hit me, but the police arrived. Yeah, and then the police arriving is what we see in the top left branch of the timeline. They were both arrested and incarcerated. Hmm. Maybe not then? Because I wasn't incarcerated. We've been working with Iber for five years, right? There's, there's a year period where I don't know what happened. This was six years ago, and then five years ago we got Iber. But I don't know what happened in between six years and five years. Why was he after your boyfriend? Before he met me, he committed some terrible crime. Multiple murders, yes. I don't know the details, but it was awful. So he became a target for underworld criminals. No shit. I don't know exactly why, but I know that he betrayed them in some way. May I ask you something? Of course. Are you dumb? <laughs> you knew he was a Are you dumb? <laughs> I had heard that that incident was a random break-in gone wrong. Oh, that's not true. I lied about it at the time because of Mizuki. Because of Mizuki? What? 
Mizuki is Iris's friend. If she found out, Iris would find out oh, too. Oh, right. Sorry. I thought she was saying... Yeah, no, never mind. I didn't want Iris to know. Know what? That I was dating a criminal. He was her father figure. Iris looked up to him. Yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> you knew he was a criminal and brought him home. Anyway. If she found out about his past... Date, we can't spend time reminiscing. I but we just spent like 15 minutes reminiscing. We have to get moving. Yeah, let's go. Alright, good chat. Onwards to Lemniscate then.